Hey guys, I'm Gene Dallasala, president of Audioholics. And today I want to talk to you about setting up an AV receiver. I've been getting a lot of emails. Hugo's been getting emails, you know, on the forums, on Facebook. People want to know how to set up their AV receivers after everything's connected, after everything is physically placed, how to best configure their base management, their inputs, the video, you know, all the streaming features, what have you. So I think it's a good idea that I take, um, I have a Denon AVP processor that we use in the AudioHulk showcase room. Now it's, you know, it's about five or six years old, maybe even older actually. Denon discontinued this model, but it was their flagship. It was their big Billy Baru. And to this day, they've never equaled it. So what's in this guy is pretty much in all their receivers and, you know, even the Marantz pre-pros. It's kind of based on all of that. So if I go through the base management of the AVP, you should be well covered. And I think if I show you real time on how to set this up, it would help a lot of people. So with that said, let's go to the projector. Let's fire it up and let's get going. Let's get this thing configured. You got to get your sleeves rolled up a little bit, guys. All right. So I'll see you there. Okay, guys, we're back. We're in front of the Denon AVP and I'm going to show you the on-screen display. And uh, basically pulled up the manual settings. Now, I understand that most of these receivers these days have auto EQ and auto setup. And I think we should do that as a separate video. Let's kind of ignore that feature for now. And let's just assume we're doing everything manual, the old fashioned way. So we'll skip that. In every receiver you buy these days that have on-screen displays and they all pretty much have base management. The first thing you wanna do is you go, wanna go into the manual setup and you wanna to go to speaker setup. And in speaker setup, you can see here, we have speaker configuration, subwoofer setup, distance, channel, level, crossover. This one happens to have THX certification, so there's some extra features there. Most of them don't. But I would start out with speaker configuration, and that's where we are here. So you flip over, and there you have your speaker sizes, and they even give you diagrams. So when you flip between large and small, you see the speaker gets smaller when it's on small. Now, I'm gonna tell you, you've heard us say this before, 90% of the cases, all your speakers should be set small, okay? In our particular situation, our reference towers are massive. They have huge amounts of base output. We run them as large because we're also routing um, LFE base to them as well. Different situation for us. So it, like I said, in most cases, you wanna put all your speakers set to small. And you see we have the center channel small, subwoofer, yes. Surround back, surround, regular surround, which is a side surround, so it was all small. Now, in our case, we don't have front height channels, so I put none. Now, you know, for the guys that do want to run large towers and you want to run a sub at the same time, you can do it, but just realize if you don't have any way to EQ the combined response, you could tend to get too much base output around the crossover region, which could sound boomy. So just keep that in mind. Try to listen and see what sounds best ultimately try to measure and if you can EQ, EQ. So there we go with speaker configuration. Next you have subwoofer setup. Now again, this is the Denon flagship, so it's a very advanced model. Most uh, receivers don't give you this kind of configurability. The Denon AVP actually has three independent subwoofer outputs. That means I have channel control and, and uh, channel trim and delay for each subwoofer, for three of them. Most of them are just paralleled outs, but in this case, they're all separate. So what we did here was we're running two stereo subs and I configured them left and right subs. So I have two subs in the front, left and right, and then I have a side sub and a back sub. Now I did that because I wanted to be able to feed two channel outputs into my mini DSP and then split that out into four independent outputs for all four of my subs. Okay, but in your case, if you're running one sub, you'll want to go to one, sp one speaker. In most cases, I would tell you to go to two subs if you have that ability as mix, not even as left and right. I'm just happen to run stereo bass on my front channel, so it's a little different. But in most cases, I would run all your subs mono, have the same signal going to all your subs. And then the LFE plus main basically routes the subwoofer channel 
to the subwoofer, the LFE plus all the bass combined small, plus it allows the main speakers to play large. If you're running small speakers, then you're gonna to wanna to set that to LFE or THX. And what that does is it will not allow your subwoofer to be on in two channel. So there's another setting for that, but it also won't route bass, deep bass to the front channels. So we'll go back to what I had set. Next, you got your distance, and this is where you need to break out your tape measure. Uh, I, another cool thing about this Denon is most of the lower end products will only give you one foot increment adjustments. The Denon is so precise that it gives you point, point 0.1 foot increment. And now again, you could do this with the auto EQ or the auto setup with the microphone. It's very accurate at measuring distance, or you could do it like I do. I use a tape measure and I go to the primary seat and I measure from each speaker. And that's how we figure out our distances. And you see, you've got your front left, right, center. I've got two subwoofers here. You've got your surround left and right and surround back left and right. And you could adjust that up and down depending on how far away your speakers are. And, you know, ideally you want to get all your speakers as close to equidistant as possible to the sweet spot. It doesn't always work out that way. And that's why you have these channel, channel delay settings. So we'll go back. Now you get the channel levels. Probably the one of the most important setups when you're setting up your speakers. Now you could do it two ways. You could do it auto, which means that the receiver will send pink noise through each speaker for a certain amount of time and you get your, your SPL meter out and you adjust the levels. Or you do manual like I prefer and it'll let you stay on each speaker so you have plenty of time to make the adjustments that you need. So we'll go here. You're gonna start hearing some noises pretty soon. There you have your front left, your center, and it just takes you through all the different speakers. And then you need to basically use your SPL meter pointing straight up close to the money seat and calibrate each channel. So they're about at the same level. I calibrate to 75 or actually I use 80 dB just because I like to be really high up above the noise floor of the room. 80 dB, slow C weighted scale on your SPL meter. And you go around. And then when you get to your subwoofer channels, if you do what we do and you use multiple subs and you EQ and you get everything flat and you have every seat a good seat, you could actually boost the subwoofer channels a few dB higher than the rest of the channels and get away with it and it won't sound offensive. So there you have that. Now, the other thing you need to, need to do is your base management. Again, in most cases, I would tell you to just use 80 hertz crossover and be done with it. Let all your speakers be set to small and do that but for those that are a little bit more advanced again i'm doing things a little bit differently because of the way i'm routing my main speakers i set my front crossover much higher because i want all that bass to go to those powered subs that are in my front speakers and still run a stereo bass again that 250 hertz on your situation most likely should be 80 hertz okay center channel 80 Surrounds 80. Now I chose 90 for the surround backs because they, they're a sealed design and they just don't have a whole lot of bass output. So I'd rather have my subwoofer channel handling the bass than having my surround back channels that aren't as good at bass trying to produce the same thing. Now this is a LFE plus main is not something you'll find on a lot of receivers. You'll find it on the better products. What this is actually is the subwoofer channel on Blu-rays, there's actually an LFE channel. And although you set all your crossovers to 80 hertz, LFE could actually go up to 120 hertz. Could actually go even higher, I believe. I think the spec is 120 hertz on Blu-ray. So I set mine to 120 hertz when I have the option. Some products, it really depends. The older products used to truncate. So if you set your crossover at 80 hertz, you would actually lose the LFE. That's anything from 80 to 120 hertz. I'm not really sure at how many movies actually have LFE content above 80 hertz, but I tend to set mine at 120 because that's the, the Blu-ray spec. So if you have this option, go in there and set that to 120. And you'll be good to go. And that pretty much covers your speaker and bass management setup. So, I mean, guys, this is so important. I can't tell you how many people's homes I've been to that have a whole surround system set up. They didn't do any of the calibrations. They didn't set up any of their subwoofer channels or the base management, nothing. 
So please get your bass management set up, get your speakers playing the right signals at the right levels with the right delays, and you'll be 60 to 80% there, okay? Now, you know, some more advanced settings, you know, HDMI setup. This is basically if you're using a video scaler, you know, you figure out if you want to use, you want to use the receiver as the video scaler or processor, or you want the Blu-ray to do it, or you want your projector to do it. You really need to figure out exactly which product you want to do this kind of stuff. And I tend to choose the one that has the best chipsets in them. And ideally you want your source to do it as much as you can. So in most cases I do pass through uh, when I use a receiver. Let's see if there's anything else. Oh, here's another thing you gotta look at. Um, anybody that's using external inputs, if they're running DVD audio or SACD, and you don't have the ability to decode those formats if you have an older product but you have multi-channel inputs. Um, Denon's really cool with the fact that they actually give you a DSP ability. And what that does is that will boost the bass because when you use SACD, there was a problem years ago when you ran analog outputs, it'd be 10 or 15 dB too low. So by putting the DSP on the, on the uh, inputs here, it'll boost those levels and it'll also give you bass management because years ago they didn't have bass management on the analog outputs. So I don't use it. Here you go with the boost. I don't use analog um, preamp outputs anymore on the Blu-ray players. There's just no need. If you have HDMI and you have a, a product that's HDMI 1.3 or above, your best bet is usually to use HDMI. It just makes your whole world a lot easier. Now, if you ran all your speakers small and you set it to LFE plus main equals LFE, so it's not sending the bass to the, to the main channels, you're gonna find in some cases you're not gonna have subwoofer output in two channel. And that's where you have these extra two channel settings. So if you're finding that your subwoofer turns off when you put on a two channel CD, make sure that your receiver, if it has an advanced setting for two channel, make sure you set it up right. So you see here I have the front set for large and I have the subwoofer on. Most of the Denons will give you this. I think there's also features in, in the other receivers for two channel setup. So just, you know, check your user manual. All the receivers are different, but they all pretty much give you similar features like that. Then your auto surround mode, I like to leave that on. That way when a 5.1 or multi-channel signal comes in, it knows to decode it and put it in that mode. And I think that covers most of that. Then, you know, you got your network set up. If you're going to do um, Ethernet into your receiver for streaming and networking, I prefer a wired connection over wireless. You could use wireless. A lot of people use wireless, but I personally set up a little hub right by my Ethernet output of my wall. And all of my audio equipment is plugged in through the Ethernet hub wire, wired. I just prefer it. It's a more stable connection. And uh, I guess call me old fashioned, but that's what I do when I can. Okay, and then um, this stuff is just, this is a preamp. So we got preamp assignability. You could change what each preamp output goes to. I'm not going to get into this because this goes beyond the scope of what most people are doing for the setup. But I think that should cover it, guys. I think um, if you have any other questions, just uh, put them below. And I will, um, you know, I'll, I'll answer them as best as I can. Uh, the only other thing I'd say is, you know, set up your surround mode. Sometimes you have the ability to set different ProLogic 2 modes to, or ProLogic or the Dolby upsampler mode, depending on what you're listening to. I listen to ProLogic 2X when, music when I'm listening to multi-channel audio. And then when I go to DVDs or Blu-ray movies, I switch to ProLogic 2 Cinema. So, you know, you just got to make sure you're in the right modes, depending on what you're listening to. And you should be good to go. The other thing I like to do is um, when I'm listening to music, just to make sure I'm in the right decoding, I go to wherever there's a status symbol here. And it'll tell you, see in this case, we're not playing anything, but it'll tell you what your surround mode is in. And it'll tell you what the signal is in. If you're decoding 2.0, which is PCM two channel stereo or 5.1, you should be able to get this information off your receiver. This should be a menu or it should say it on the uh, front display. Always check that from time to time, guys. Make sure you're actually getting surround sound when you're supposed to be. 
Okay, and that's it. I think we're set. So please, guys, uh, subscribe to this video if you liked it. And feel free to answer, ask your questions below. We'll be happy to answer. Till next time, guys, keep listening.